Hey everybody, this is Frankie Slauson, and welcome to the Frankie Slauson Show, where we do a lot of things based on media, but and interviews, and people that are involved with entertainment, and today's guest has, I, I can definitely say it has a big role uh, in, in the entertainment industry when it comes to uh, movies, music, even books. Uh, who am I talking about? None other than Giuseppe Andrews. Welcome to the show. Cool. Glad to be here. Yeah, glad to glad to have you on, and uh, it's a thrill to uh, finally get a chance to talk to you. And uh, I'm, I'm sure the audience is, will definitely w like to learn a, a little bit about you today. Cool. <laughs> you sound like a, you're a pretty laid back guy. First of all. Well, uh, yeah, sure. <laughs> <laughs> And, and you know uh, we're we're not that close. Uh, we're actually pretty close in age. I'm only uh, I just turned 29 years old here uh, last September, and I read on your Wikipedia thing that you're only 33. So we're only a few years apart. All right, all right. <laughs> so uh, the first question I want to ask you is, uh, how did you get started in the like the in acting? First of all, uh, I was living in a van and with my uh, dad. And he, uh, we needed some money, so we went and looked in the paper and did a, and I did a hair infomercial and it led me to an agent audition and then I just kept going on calls. And, and then you just kind of, that's kind of kind of how it uh, got started for you then, huh? Yeah, that, it just took off from there and I just did it. Wow, that's... It's kind of kind of bizarre, you know, being uh, living in a living in a van. I'm sure that was kind of a different experience from living in a house. Yeah, well, I I just got out of a a condo, and um, it, it, I tell you the truth, it was a lot better. Oh, really? Um, I, I yeah, it was actually some really cool years living in the van. <clears throat> um, I just went to the beach every day, and it was really cool. Oh, well, that's good. I mean. Well, I mean, maybe, uh, maybe uh, Matt Foley was right. Maybe living in a van down by the river is the way to do it. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> you, you remember yeah, from Saturday Night Live, Chris Farley? You know, that's good. Sure, yeah, yeah of course. <laughs> yeah, good, good old reference anyway. And, yeah. Uh, yeah, so, well, okay, so uh, when you got involved, what was, like, the first big thing that you actually did, like, to start your career in, like, movies and stuff like that? Um, I auditioned for uh, I did a thing with Diane Keaton called Unstrung Heroes and that was like the first big role okay and then that and then that led to Independence Day the sci-fi thing and then those were like the first um, big thing okay I mean I suppose it was pretty cool when you got to do your first movie called Getting It Right back in 1989 oh that one yeah um. <clears throat> yeah, it was weird. You know, I I liked it. Yeah, it's uh, pretty much a haze. But yeah, it, it was. I I, can't, I remember that one. Yeah, that was pretty <laughs> good. It was a weird thing. I never was interested in it. You know that much. Okay. Um, I did it because we were in a van and we were like dead broke, and it just kind of like life kind of just threw me in that direction. So I I, I didn't think much of it. I just did it and started doing it and I had a knack for it <clears throat> um, I always enjoyed doing it but it was never like like a um, I finally had to get away from it because I would just wasn't I just wanted to do my own art you know oh sure yeah I can understand that I mean sometimes being in the spotlight you know or even just doing a variety of films you know sometimes you just gotta do what you want to do, you know, and and you obviously yeah. have. I, I've seen on your website all the different things, and we'll get into that here after a while. All the different things that you've accomplished for just being such a young young man and everything, and uh, that's uh, that's quite the accomplishment in its own right. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, I want to talk about one of the favorite movies that you did. Uh, I'm sure you hear about this all the time, and I talked to Adam about Adam Ripkin uh, about this here on Tuesday when I talked to him. Uh, but one of my favorite movies that you did was Detroit Rock City, and basically, yeah. basically because not just because it, it really wasn't a mainstream movie at the time when it came out. It it was actually I think uh, Adam was saying uh, when when he did another interview with a friend of mine, he he was saying that it wasn't really it didn't do that well in the box office. No, it didn't do well. No. <clears throat> And then, it was, uh, yeah. 
and then all of a sudden it just kind of blew up with the DVD and uh, and all the type of Kiss fans and movie fans and my my actual favorite part in the movie itself is basically the uh, well out of many is the opening credits uh, to uh, see all that seventies nostalgia what when you uh, when you first watch the movie uh, I mean for people who've never seen it. Uh, it starts off with you guys uh, playing the uh, Kiss songs as your band Mystery, your fictional band Mystery, uh, doing that, and then uh, eventually Lynn Shea finds out that uh, one of the records uh, <laughs> is not what she wanted to listen to, and uh, then it goes into the intro with uh, the seventies nostalgia, and I was just like, I was blown away by that. Who's I? Do you know whose idea it was to, to do an intro like that? I'm guessing Adam. <laughs> I guess I should have asked him that in the interview, but I never did. I, I, I kind of just wanted to ask you. <laughs> I have no idea. <laughs> but what do you think about the intro, Dutch, and let alone being in the movie itself? You thought it was pretty cool? Oh, I, I thought, yeah, he did an awesome job with the film. I thought the film came out great. And, and you had a you had a very big role in that movie uh, as uh, Lex and... Uh, yeah, I mean, do uh, you want to tell people a little bit about it uh, in case they've never seen it? People don't give too much away, but you know, kind of. I'm not so good at well about the, about acting movies. I don't I don't know so much about them because, like I say, it was never like a, a passionate thing for me. Okay. I, I just really I was just really doing it because that was way that was where I was at at the time. Okay. And I don't. It wasn't a happy time for me. Oh. I was very, I, I, I remember during that time I just was becoming more and more depressed because I had all these ideas of my own to do and I just felt like I needed to start doing them. Okay. Well, that, so well, acting was, all, was never a passion, a really passionate thing for me. It was just really just where I was at at the time. Okay, well, no, that, that, that's fine. And uh, we can talk about your, uh, your, your stuff that you've done. If you want to go right into that, we can do that. That's not a big deal. Uh, I, I just, yeah, I just, uh, myself, uh, I just want to let you know that I, I just, I'm a big movie guy, you know, and I, I love films, you know, I love any, anything about the film industry when it comes to good films, and, and Detroit Rock City, to me, was one of those films that was good, uh, even if it wasn't something that you enjoyed or whatever, it was still something that, uh, I know that I, as a viewer anyway, uh, love to watch anyway. So. Cool. <laughs> But let's talk. Yeah, like I say, for, for people, a lot of different experience, you know. Oh, sure. Oh, sure. Everybody's there for 18 million different reasons, and it's just what you get out of it when you watch it, so. Okay. All right, well, let's talk about some of the stuff that you've done, then. Uh, other than just the acting thing, let's talk about the, the passion that you did have, or that you do have even currently, when it comes to your writing, directing, scoring, editing, shooting, and producing all your... Uh, films that you've done on your website. How did that idea come to come to pass? Um, I, I just like um, well, I felt like um, <laughs> it, it took always the way that it was going to be. It, uh, so it's hard hard for me to answer. Um, I just I, I I got into I guess I guess I got into foreign film watching, watching foreign movies when I was 19. I got introduced to foreign film and I related to them heavily and um, the directors that I, were watch, I was watching, like directors like Boss Bender and some of the German filmmakers, just um, really talked to me about ideas that, and feelings I had inside that I needed to, to do. So I just kind of, uh, it wasn't much thought about it. I just started doing it. I got a camera and then, um, started started filming um, in a trailer park where I was living okay. and I ended up making um, 30 something movies there or so, something like that and then uh, yeah doing music and writing books there too and and Adam really uh, he really complimented you as far as uh, how, of how talented you are he said that most of your movies were not that I mean weren't really that expensive to make but but it looked like it was really like something that you would watch like in a theater, more or less. Cool. Yeah, a lot of them. Yeah, I didn't have much money to work with. Um, uh, like always, it's just about ideas is all you need. So, but I had great people in the in the park that I filmed with, and 
um, they were just such great characters and, and people that um, and with the ideas we, uh, we made it work and yeah so did you ever want your films to be really really big or did you just want people just to see what type of ideas can come out of your mind at first I just wanted to keep living you know like <laughs> um, for me see for me art like a, is like the, the the psychic movement of my life so like how anybody else does something or moves themselves through life that's what I do with ideas so at first I didn't think I didn't think I didn't really think about who would see him at all I made a, I made a bunch of films and then only a few years later did, did like the idea to start showing them places come up and I started showing them in film festivals and stuff and um, it was really weird for me at first because I had never really even come from the direction of making them for or thinking about people seeing them and then all of that kind of developed so, so have you had uh, any good feedback from uh, from viewers at all? Um, oh, we get oh yeah, we get letters all the time. People, um, I have lots of fans who love my films, and um, sure, yeah, we screened them in, in quite a few places. We'll be doing lots more of that. So okay, well, no, that, that that's interesting because uh, uh, now it kind of gets uh, now kind of gets you uh, in, in the mood to to develop more more ideas and uh, to say, well, you know what, I have a handful of films here, you know. Let's see what else I, I can come up with. The cell phone. The cell phone. That's just my mom. Just hold on. <laughs> the cell phone is. I put it on the table, just so you know. Okay. I kind of stay with my parents once here and there, so Trust. they kind of. It seems like they always interfere when I'm doing interviews, but. Chubs. <laughs> <laughs> but Chubs okay, uh, is fine. He can stay in here. Okay. I'm, I'm talking to somebody, so just. <laughs> Sorry about that, there, man. I'm alright. Uh, yeah, I. I don't really like to tell people, but yeah, I, I, it's, I most people that watch my YouTube stuff they know that I I currently live with my parents just because I've had some bad luck, you know, in my in my life as well, where you know things didn't go the way they're supposed to go, and then I just opened a YouTube account for like four years or a little over four years ago, and uh, uh, kind of I haven't really had any success with it like financially, but I've had. I think more success with just the fact of being able to do interviews with people like yourself and Adam and and all types of people. If you ever go to my YouTube site, I can always I don't know if you checked it out at all when I sent you the interview request at all. But uh, there's a lot of different uh, uh, people that I've had the chance to talk to, which makes it kind of exciting. Except I get nobody yeah. really I get nobody to watch it. <laughs> yeah. <coughs> but anyway, uh, back to back to your interview here. Uh, yeah, I think it's amazing uh, that you were able to reach a, a fan base, or at least a little fan base anyway, of people to, uh, who want to uh, view your, your stuff, your movies. Yeah, it's way, um, you know, like, uh, yeah, it's just what I do, so, um, fuck, man, um, yeah, it's like, uh, I don't know, I'm having a hard time, to art I'm having a hard time articulating my thoughts, uh -huh. um, I'm just having a hard time. Oh, um, it happens. So here's, man. The thing, here's the thing. Uh, yeah, it's hard for me to answer. Um, it's hard for me to answer. Um, well, that's okay. I, mean, I do art. I, I do. I do art every day, and um, I'm trying to like change. I I, I I don't know about all the people and stuff, but I'm trying to like <laughs> change one person or, or or like um, oh. oh free one person's mind, you know? Sure. Basically, I'm, I'm not thinking of, like, a whole bunch of people. I'm just thinking of, you know, basically my own psyche and, and how to move myself through life with ideas, and then maybe, like, one other person who perhaps, um, through the world of the ideas that I've presented, has their mind freed and hopefully explores their own creativity, you know? Oh, sure. No, no, that's, 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 uh, that's fine, because, you know what? Sometimes it's just better just to have it be you and the camera and whatever idea you come up with. And, if, you know, pe the people will come later. And even if it's not about the people, that's fine, too. Because, you know, sometimes uh, you, you got to get in your moments where you got to think, what what can I do that's best for me? Not best for what somebody else would want to see, but what what's best that I want to see. So, I understand. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, so, yeah. <clears throat> 
But you're pretty much proud of your accomplishments anyway. I mean, as far as the being able to make the, the independent films that you've done. Well, yeah, I am. And, and I'll, I'll, it's a, it, it, see, it's different for me. I, I, I definitely am, yeah. But I, I, I think that it's, I think that ideas and creativity and art is, is the only thing that really exists. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I think that, I think that it's all that there, that really there is. So like when, so it's just kind of like, um, um, I'm just excited to be doing art in this way on this planet, like in, with, the, with the, the tools that are available here and the way that we get to express our ideas here. Um, you know what I mean? Yeah. But, uh, with cameras and yeah. instruments and things like that. Like I see you and I see everybody as just an artistic idea, myself, everything in the world. Mm -hmm. So, um, I, I'm like I think we're we've always been creating and we're just creating again here in a different way. So um, these pieces of art that I make, yeah, I'm, I'm just very um, it's it's very interesting to me to see how they can become visible in such a place. Like sure, sure. You know, they, they can go on a CD or a film or a book. Yeah. Ideas that we can create in, in any way and in, in any other place, like here, they can become visible in these in these wild ways, like in movies and things like that that we call CDs and books, and that's just really that's very it's very exciting, you know. Yeah. So, like, uh, did you have any inspiration? Like, any certain artist inspire inspire you at all to to do the the art that you do? Well, sure. Um, like I mentioned before, uh, this German filmmaker, his name is Rainer Werner Fassbender. Uh-huh. Um, he was a real big inspiration for me, and around the time when I was making films, I started to make films, there were like three major films that really um, inspired me. One was called I Stand Alone. It was a French film. Uh-huh. By Gaspar No. Um, there's another film called Butterfly Kiss by Michael Winterbottom with Amanda Plummer in it. Huh. And there was a film called Gummo by Harmony Kareen. Huh. Um, these three films were, were very big for me. Oh, I don't think I've ever heard of them before. <laughs> of course, they're around here is all cool. Americana stuff. Yeah, no, no. Yeah. <laughs> I'm always, I'm always open to something different. You know, I mean, <clears throat> some people don't like uh, change when it comes to change, even in, in uh, films and stuff. But I'm always into like independent stuff, and you know, even there was a movie uh, that I that I watched a long time ago, back in 2002, called Igby Goes Down. I don't know if you ever heard that or not, but uh, it was with Kieran Culkin. He was like the main star. It wasn't like a big movie that you'd see in the theater, but it was like just a small market movie. But that too alone was a, a pretty good independent film that I think that uh, will qualify for like Sundance and everything. So, yeah, that's pretty amazing. Did, did you ever think about doing like a, some Sundance film festival thing with your movies at all eventually, or are you just thinking yeah, about it? Well, I wrote a script. Yeah, I did. I, I had one experience with that. I wrote a script. I, I saw the script on my website. It was it was called Spur of the Moment. I wrote a western for the band Sonic Youth. Okay. And I had these um, <clears throat> these thoughts that I would go and pitch it and like find some money for it. And uh, so I went on this adventure to do that, uh, talking to these people and this French guy, and it was a uh, disaster. And um, I like to. I like to. I don't think of festivals, but I definitely like to shoot. And I like to shoot like a, a movie on film one day um, in Florida. There's an idea for that. Right now, it's just like, um, yeah, I don't. I don't think about that stuff at all. But um, I did have experiences with that, just shooting in a, in a in a different kind of way on film or something. But I I don't think about that anymore. Now I'm doing like. Um, uh, I'm working on two films right now, um, just with me and my wife, and uh, so I'm just doing that. Okay, well, you're still keeping yourself busy. I see it on your website that you wrote some books, too. You want to go into detail about that? Yeah, yeah, I love writing. That's become like a, 
a very big thing for me. I in the beginning when I started making movies, I wrote a little novella called Dolly Balls, and that was like kind of the beginning of my, me finding a, a, a style and my own voice of of writing. And then uh, not till years later was I able to have the space to keep doing that or do it again. And now it's really opened up. And I just wrote an uh, I just wrote. Um, well, I got I got like a bunch of books coming out. I have one called Teen Town, which is like this 600 page drawing and textbook, which I'm really psyched on. It's like a whole new kind of novel. Huh. And then I have a book of drawings coming out, and then I have another work of fiction coming out called Father Figure, which is a full novel, <coughs> and my first book on Kate. So oh, I'm really wow. I'm really excited about that. Um, that'll be coming out this year. So um, yeah, I love writing. It's something that. I've always wanted to have the, the space to do, and it just recently popped up. Um, mostly it's been films and music um, up until this time, but I've, I've had the chance recently, starting last year, to really start working on a lot of books, and that's something that's really, really been exciting and really uh, just great for me in a lot of ways. It seems like you've been a very busy guy there, I guess that's been. Guess happy. <laughs> I, I, I go, I go ev- every single day, is like um, is is the thing you know what I mean uh-huh. so it's like every day is the only thing that's happening so when I get up what happens that day is like you know the biggest thing so I'm I'm an, I'm an every day you know I'm working on it every day um, that's yeah so that's, and just think why a lot of and just happens. yeah and just think man most people waste their lives uh, playing video games all day long <laughs> while you're yeah, actually being well, creative you know yeah. Oh no, that, well, that, yeah. that's cool. That that's very video cool. games can be good too. For it depends. <laughs> <laughs> so, like on an average day, how 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 many hours do you think you put into like a an art piece or or part of your novel or a movie or how how long do you or how many hours in a day do you normally do uh, uh, dedicate to whatever it is that you plan on doing? Well, usually I, I get up about uh, eight or nine, and then. Um, hear a record or something and then go right in and then work until like three or four hours until lunch and then maybe take a walk and then work another four hours until dinner and then I get like a little hour or two after that before coffee and I do that and then sometimes but then sometimes I'll get up in the middle of the night and work too so it's it's really just in between every single thing else I'm working well just be grateful in between meals or walk yeah just be grateful you don't have to have like a regular job like like some of us here, <laughs> a nine to five job. Even though yeah. your job is kind of like that, but uh, it's kind of cool when you can work for yourself. Yeah, I'm very, I'm very, um, I'm very happy about it. Oh, that, that's uh, I'm excited about it. <laughs> so you've had a lot of I'm su- excited about it. So you, so in other words, you've had a lot of success uh, as far as uh, being able to take care of yourself, your family, with, with the stuff that you've been able to do. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, acting was was, was a cool was a period um, that helped me out with that a little bit. And then um, I am um, lucky enough to have uh, my wife or my friend, whatever you want to call her, uh, sure. who support just you know helps us and if anything comes up like that with money or something, so I'm able to do my work. So was that the lady that I was talking to on the phone earlier? <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> okay. She's supposed to be that uh, sets up your uh, appointments or whatever, I suppose. Huh? Well, yeah. She does. She built the website, but she does. Um, we do art together. Like we're, we're making film together, and we make records together. We have a band. Okay. And called the Panty Liners. <laughs> and we have our first record coming out this year called Rubber Duck. And she sings, and, and she's really great, and she, she paints and stuff, and she's just now getting into animation so we can incorporate, like, animation into stuff. So we're like a we're like a team. Yeah, we do art together and stuff, so it's really great. Wow. You know, man, man I tell you, I've learned so much about you in, in this interview, more than I ever thought I would ever know. Uh, here, I thought we were just going to talk about acting and stuff, and here, here to find out that you've done so much more than just that, it's just... Uh, Simply amazes me, and you're only 33. I mean, geez, most of these people, most people accomplish all this stuff by the time they're 60 or 70, and you're so you're only 33. <laughs> I can't stand I, the, the it's the it's the way that I see existence and the way that I feel time and existence. 
You know what I mean? Yeah. I, I, I feel like every day is like a, a big thing, and my life has been psychically intense, and the art has um, has led me through those psychic intensities and has become like, you know, the whole way that I exist. So that's why I guess um, uh, different for me than other people, perhaps. It take more time to do other things or something. I don't know, but for me, it's worked. That's the way that it goes. So, uh, so when you're not doing uh, films and stuff like that, and, and writing books and, and doing your day to day things, what other things do you like to enjoy on a on a day to day basis? Do you like to go out to movies or anything, or do you like to, I don't know, go oh, on sure. trips? Or <laughs> yeah, I love going to movies. I don't get to see a lot of stuff that appeals to me. Uh huh. But but once in a while, um, I live in a cool town, so I got we got good, good cinemas and. Uh, sometimes they show old movies or like once in a while something cool pops up and I get like to go out to films. Um, I, I love to uh, just drive around in cars and listen to uh, rap music. Oh, <laughs> wow. I can't, picture I, you like being, I can't picture you being a rapper or into rap music, man, I tell you. <laughs> I love it, man. I love gangster rap. Jeez. Do you sing along I'm to so it? Into it. <laughs> well, oh, sh- are you kidding? Absolutely. I love it. I don't love it all. I love the really good stuff. There's only a few records that I got that I, I thought were really awesome, but I listen to those, and then I go swimming in the summer, uh-huh. and I like to I like to look at art books, and I love to listen to music, and I watch. I just I'm on season eleven of Murder She Wrote. Oh wow! Uh, At night, I, I've been watching Murder She Wrote. It's horrible, but you have to solve a, a murder <laughs> mystery. <laughs> You know, I, I was asking Adam Rifkin uh, when when I did the interview with him, uh, just kind of a, to mention, just because uh, you know, since you were in Detroit Rock City and everything, uh, uh, I, I mentioned to him like, if if uh, if they ever decided to do a Blu-ray of that movie, would you ever be interested in doing like a, a updated documentary if they ever put that in a feature? Like, if Adam ever wanted to do like an updated documentary for it? Never, no way. <laughs> Uh, that, that 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 chapter has has closed and will never be reopened. <laughs> so they could never pay you to do that. Huh? <laughs> they can never pay me enough. No. Oh man, I don't know. I, I'm sorry to bring it up, but I just you know I that's all I you know that I've see, seen you do as far as what I've seen anyway. Uh, I gotta go into your website and actually see all these movies that you do. You you got me excited, you know, to 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 see something that I've never seen before. <laughs> cool. Yeah, yeah. So I want to personally thank you, uh, Giuseppe. You you seem like a very cool guy, and I I wish one day our paths would actually cross uh, uh, in real life. Uh, even though I live up nor- in northern Minnesota, and you live, I think what in Dallas, Texas, right now, or we're or somewhere over there. Yeah, I'm living in Texas. <laughs> yeah, you lucky bastard. <laughs> the weather's I'm sure is a lot better over there than it is over here. <laughs> Everything's bigger in Texas. Yeah, that's for sure. <laughs> <laughs> All right, man. Well, I tell you what, I, I do appreciate this, and uh, it's been a it's been an honor to uh, have this chance to uh, speak with you. And I'm sure the audience uh, has enjoyed this interview and uh, got to see a side of you that I never thought ever existed. <laughs> cool, man. Hey, it was great, and I want everybody to remember: brains die, minds don't. And be sure to check out your webs or uh, Giuseppe's website at GiuseppeAndrews.net. I believe is the right is that the right address? It is. Thank uh, you. You're welcome. All right, man. You have a good night, and uh, we'll hopefully talk to you again someday. Right on, man. Thank you. Bye. Bye. And that was Giuseppe Andrews. Very nice guy. Very young guy. He's only. He's only 33 years old. I I'm only uh, tw- I turned 29 back in September. And four year difference. But uh, yeah, very very cool guy. And I hope you got everybody enjoyed that. It was a special treat as a way to kind of kick up off uh, February here uh, on the Frankie Slauson Show. And I I really hope that you guys are enjoying th- these interviews. Uh, what I want to do, what I what I was going to mention in the last interview that I did before I get interrupted. Uh, I wanted to maybe have like a a video or like where people who are actually uh, people that listen to my interviews do like some video, personal video responses on either Facebook or YouTube or somehow some way do some type of response 
uh, and tell me deeply what you think about these interviews. What you like about them, what you don't like about them. Do I talk too much? Are they too long? Are they too short? Uh, and, and who would you like me to try to find? And that's one thing that people have asked me, you know, like, how do you do this? How do you find all these people? Well, it's all about initiative in my book. And it's, it's about being able to say, you know what, I can do this, rather than people saying you can't do this. And, and my way of just doing it is I look through Facebook, and I look through personal websites, and if I feel that that person is real like they say they are, like they claim they are, I uh, I, I send them a request, an interview request, and, and hope that they respond back. And if they do, it's great. If they don't, well, you know, we just keep moving on. You can't linger too, on, too much on the past. But uh, for those of you who want to uh, let me know if some people that would be interested to, to find, just realize I'm probably not going to interview Justin Bieber uh, or anybody that's like, or Mel Gibson or anybody that's, uh, you know, really big and famous. Most of these people that I've been able to find either were famous way back in the day or uh, aren't really doing as much in the media anymore or are still famous, like Ann Rifkin, and, uh, but are open to any ideas pretty much when it comes to getting his name out there and, and uh, their product out there and everything. And realize this that I'm not getting paid, but if there's anybody that would like to maybe do an open sponsorship, you know, or, or some type of thing where they'd like to sponsor my uh, interview show and, and try to help me get, get some guests and stuff that are real people and everything, that'd be great too. Maybe find an assistant or something so I'm not doing this all by myself because it is a lot of work and you know, this may be the 26th interview that I've done since uh, August of last year, but it's still a lot of work because sometimes things don't always work out the way they should. Most of the time, they have, but most of the time, they don't. So it's kind of 50-50. But anyway, I just want to thank you guys for tuning in, and uh, we'll see you on another edition of the Frankie Slauson Show right here on YouTube.com.